if you're met with someone that's negotiating from a soft style of negotiation, I'll go along to get along, mm-hmm. versus someone that's negotiating from a hard perspective, my way or the highway type mm-hmm. of thing, mm-hmm. your demeanor until that person changes should match the demeanor that you're negotiating with, of, of the person that you're negotiating with. So if someone is negotiating from a hard position, you can take a hard stance. We're going to go straight to our guest now. None other than Greg Williams. I met Greg at a C-Suite Network conference a number of years ago. Asked him to come on. He came on right away. Here's the story about Greg. He is known as the master negotiator. And of course, when you listen to the show tonight, you'll understand why. He wrote, how many books, Greg? Actually, seven. Seven books. His most recent two books are Body Language Secrets, Secrets, to win more negotiations. And his most recent one is negotiating with a bully. Take charge and turn the tables on people trying to push you around. (laughs) Who who wouldn't benefit from these books, right? We're out there, It's it's a tough world out there, and you want the tactics, you want to know how to, how to negotiate. And that's why we wanted to get Greg Williams on the show. Greg, it, by the way, Greg is a consultant. He consults for many businesses out there. You want to know how to get that big contract? You'll reach out. We're going to talk to, and we're going to find out more information on, on how to uh, how you can get Greg on your side. You certainly don't want him on the other side. That I could tell you. <laughs> he speaks worldwide. Um, Greg, it's a real honor to have you on Mind Your Business. Well, thank you for having me back, Ishak. I yes. really appreciate it. Well, we're going to get right into it because, you know, this is, as as we spoke about, and as is common sense to anyone out there in the world, negotiating is one skill that if you have it, you could be extremely successful. And if you don't, I mean, I don't want to say you're going to fail because, you know, listen, God can make anything happen. But at the end of the day, negotiating is that one skill that you need to be successful in business. So... Greg, I know you have clients, you speak worldwide on, on all about negotiating and reading body language, which we're going to get into. What's the one thing you teach attendees? Let's say when you present in seminars, a corporate event, what's that one thing that we want to just kick off the show with that you tell people, this is what you got to know in order to be successful? Well, first of all, you have to be mindful of the fact, no matter what environment you're in, you're always negotiating. And I say that to say, When you give insight about how you might address a particular action, how you might engage in any particular situation, Mm -hmm. you're giving insight as to how you might do so in the future. And thus, a good negotiator will be able to take that information in while you're in, let's say, a natural mode, Mm -hmm. uh, a non-negotiating mode, because Mm -hmm. most people don't consider themselves negotiating Mm -hmm. until they're sitting down at the table across from someone or something of that nature. No, 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 no. If you give me information about how you might act later on, I can actually invoke certain actions in you simply because I know what stimuli will make you react in a certain manner. So remember, you're always negotiating. So, you know, this is so fascinating that because, um, you know, God blessed you with, with the skills, you walk into a room and you pick up the cues, the eye motions, the facial motions, the way the hands move. So, like, you have... an. You know, it, it's an unfair advantage <laughs> that you bring to the table. Well, I always try, number one, <laughs> to be respectful of people, okay. and I never intentionally attempt to take advantage but of individuals. But you know what's going on. Well, uh, exactly. There are times when I will literally be in an airport or any public place, and I'll observe the body language gestures of individuals. Mm. Now, here's a little secret. Sometimes, as a consultant, I'm brought in to actually gather information about a target of a pending negotiation, and I'll be in environments that they feel as though they are in a natural, neutral environment. Now, I'm observing their body language, their temperament, et cetera, et cetera, because then when we go into the official negotiation, I'm able to glean information about how they differed in a neutral environment and what causes them to become somewhat erratic, let's say, later on. So it helps to develop that strategy and just being able to gain those insights. And yes, you spoke about the body language that people exhibit from Mm -hmm. time to time, Yashak. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, when people are really calm, mm-hmm. you know, the breathing is natural, the movements are natural, mm-hmm. and the body always wants to stay in a state of calm. And thus, as soon as someone gets a little stressful, Mm -hmm. they'll do things, rub their forehead, rub their lips. Uh, The body is trying to get back into that state of comfort. Comfort. Babies cry when they're not comfortable. And we do that throughout our whole life. We seek to stay in a state of comfort. But what's so um, rewarding to the listeners by having Greg on the show is that you're sharing these tips now, you, you, you talk about them in your books. Yes, I do, definitely. You know what? I want to go to the books for a second because Greg's a nice guy. Um, I mean, he's a master negotiator, but he's a nice guy. <laughs> Two, a one lucky listener is going to win his, his most recent books. Two books, Body Language Secrets. Secrets. Why did I make that mistake? <laughs> Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiations. How to Read Any Opponent and Get What You Want. That's one book. The other one is Negotiating with a Bully. Take Charge and Turn the Tables on People Trying to Push You Around. One lucky listener is going to win both books. All you have to do is text over MYB to 64600. Text over MYB to 64600. One lucky listener is going to win Negotiating with a Bully, Take Charge and Turn the Tables on People Trying to Push You Around, and Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiations. Both of these books, an autographed copy, is going to one lucky listener. Again, text over MYB to 64600. What mindset should one have when entering a negotiation? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, yeah. Yushak, because the mindset that you have when you enter a negotiation will actually foretell how successful you'll be during the negotiation. And what I mean by that is if you go into a negotiation with the mindset of, why are they negotiating with me? I don't have a lot to offer. Um, oh, gosh. Or worse. I have to have this negotiation come out Mm. the way I need it to be or else whatever would be the negative outcome. Exactly, exactly. It creates stress in you when you're negotiating also. And as we talk more about body language later in this session, Mm -hmm. we'll also talk about the fact that you emit body language signals that say, I'm desperate. Help me. So one has to go. Whether when one realizes it or not. Exactly. Oh, and oh, that's a perfect perfect statement because that's the truth whether one realizes it or not the other aspect about the mindset is Mm -hmm. if you act in a confident manner it'll be portrayed throughout your actions now some people may have noticed the tonality change right in my voice right you had that that was yeah exactly right and energy can be felt when you're in a negotiation which can offset the opposing team if they think they have the upper hand and you all of a sudden say something along the lines of, I'll tell you what, (laughs) I'll take it or leave it. Uh, As a matter of fact, I'll give you five minutes to make a decision because then I'm out of here. And they'll go, well, wait a minute. I thought I had the upper hand. No, 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 no. (laughs) So it's a way just by having that mindset to actually control the flow of the negotiation. Amazing. You're sharing all the secrets, Uh folks. Oh, and the listeners should know by now, um, but I still get questions from time to time about it. They're like, you know, I tuned in halfway through the show. How can I get the whole thing? This entire episode will be up at mybradio.com, mybradio.com. That is the uh, platform where every single past show, even the one where I interviewed Greg back in 2016, it's up there as well. mybradio.com is where this show will be permanently archived. And over there on that site, you'll see all the little buttons uh, to and will take you to the platform of your choice. Some people like listening on Spotify and the OG Podcast Network, on Player.fm, on iTunes, whatever it is. Um, and of course, if you go directly to those channels, you type in "Mind Your Business" with these successless. These shows will come up, and we are videoing tonight, so this will be up on YouTube as well. Now, Greg, you 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 mentioned at the beginning of the show, and you're known to say you're. Always negotiating. Is that just your <laughs> motto or is there you know, more, more to that? No, no. The, um, number one, it really is truthful. And we were talking about mindsets a moment mm-hmm. ago. That's the mindset that one should always be in because you will be in situations with those that you'll be negotiating with 
in the future. And when you're in a current situation that's non-negotiating, mm-hmm. you can gather insight, as I stated earlier. And that mindset, again, allows you to understand more of the person's personality type, what really will rile the person, mm-hmm. to what degree the person may put on a front based on the right. environment also. So you, you gather so much information by just maintaining the mindset of uh, you're always negotiating. It's like, you know, I, when I, whenever I've heard you say it, and we've met many times in the past, you know, you're always negotiating. I'm like, you know, is it... Uh, I mean, you're the master negotiator, so I, you know, you, you have a right to say it. But is it is it real? And your point is so well taken. I mean, you you can never be off guard, is what you're saying. Exactly. Oh, that is the truth, one hundred percent. You can never be off guard, because if you let your guard down, others will observe information that you emit also our body sends out so many signals throughout the course of the day throughout any interaction that we have with people and thus you're giving off clues and cues as to how you feel at a certain time what made you feel that particular way okay well how can i use that in a negotiation against you or to get you motivated to do a certain thing later on becomes the the mindset that one has to stay in touch with at all times Greg, you know, if, let's talk about when someone is negotiating in a one-on-one environment mm. versus a group of, of people. Yeah. What are your secrets to negotiating, in, you know, again, one-on-one versus a group? Well, first of all, one-on-one has a different dynamic altogether than one versus many or mm-hmm. many versus many. And I say that to say, when you're actually in a one-on-one environment, you're sitting across from somebody, you're talking to them about Mm -hmm. what their wants are in order to get what it is that you need. Uh, When you're talking to a group of people, there can be a variation of what it is that they are seeking. I recall a situation once when I was in the governor's office in New Jersey many years ago. I had assembled a team. Uh, We had talked about what our roles would be and how we would portray ourselves such as to be perceived in a certain manner. Someone on the team all of a sudden during the negotiation took it upon himself to actually say, well, wait a minute, let's try something else. And I cut an eye at him and I thought, where's this coming from? I didn't recognize it at the time, but I realized it later. This person was seeking some special attention from the governor, which is what made him do just that. So when I said you're always negotiating, you have to think ahead of time, too, how you're going to handle such situations. I had thought about that. And I said that individual closely close to me and I was able to nudge him under the table as it was <laughs> how hard was that kick <laughs> ah, yeah okay you used the right word <laughs> i was being gentle <laughs> they're not gonna throw us the air they can throw us the, off the air for that <laughs> right <laughs> greg before negotiation begins what tips or recommendations would you have for someone to set themselves up to have to improve their chances like perhaps um, should they should they put something out on social media? You know, so, some what what tips would you share on, in that regard? Well, and here's something I tell people when they ask questions about negotiation strategies that one should develop. I say it depends. It depends on the situation because there are certain times when you will want to position yourself such as to have possibly more more resources, more whatever than you actually do. There'll be other times when you will want to give the exact opposite impression so in social media you can position yourself as such and even more so if you know what your target is listening to watching following on social media you can jump in front of those streams and have all of a sudden yourself appear to be larger than life or appear to be getting testimonials from people that are thought leaders that you're target is actually following. So there are many different ways, but it depends on how you wish to be positioned. At a situation one time sure. when I was going to talk with a lawyer to secure his services, mm-hmm. I took off my watch. 
I made sure he didn't see the car that I was driving in or anything of that nature so as not to give information or clues as to what type of net worth I might have possessed. And he said to me after he and I got to know one another after a while, mm-hmm. he said, you know, I noticed you didn't have a watch on. And I said, uh, uh, yeah, well, sometimes I wear one, sometimes I don't. Now, I have a, a nice watch. I'll phrase okay. it in that manner. Okay. And he said... And why didn't you have that watch on on that day? I said, I eh, didn't feel like it. He said, mm, yeah, okay. I've learned <laughs> lessons from you already. <laughs> <laughs> but you see that that person also was uh, trained in monitoring the cues. Exactly, exactly. And those are the same type of cues you can post in social media. My guest is the master negotiator. That's it's straight up. The master negotiator, Greg Williams. Uh, he wrote many books. His most recent two releases can be yours. Now, of course, you could buy them on Amazon. They're available at bookstores nationwide. Um, the uh, But two lucky listeners are going to win the set of the two most recent books. So we're giving away four books to two listeners. Uh, one of them is Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiations, How to Read Any Opponent and Get What You Want. Who wouldn't want that book? All right. <laughs> and the other one is Negotiating with a Bully. Take charge and turn the tables on people trying to push you around. All you have to do to be in the running, to be one of the two lucky listeners who are going to win both books, all you have to do is text over MYB to 64600. MYB. Text it over to 64600. One lucky list, two lucky listeners are going to win both books autographed by Greg. Um, good luck. And I'm lucky enough to have in studio the master negotiator, Greg Williams. Greg, thank you so much for joining me here on Mind Your Business. And thank you for the invitation. Oh, it's shocked. great. It's always, I remembered when we sat together four years ago, I'm like, we got to get him back in the show one day. We got to get, and also because. Let's face it, who out there who out there wouldn't benefit from the information that you're sharing to become a master negotiator? That's that's it, it doesn't make a difference what business someone is in. That's why it, it's 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 so evergreen and universal the the tactics, the information. In fact, I'm going to ask a funny question, but just I, I would even say that you could be a marriage counselor, you know. <laughs> Well, yes, you can be anything, (laughs) anybody, because you do use negotiation strategies and tactics anytime you're engaging another person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Before we jump into the conversation, I want to let the listeners know our giveaway tonight is two books from Greg that are going to go to two lucky listeners. Again, we're giving away four books. They're going to two people. One book is Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiations, How to Read Any Opponent and Get What You Want by Greg Williams with Pat Iyer. Yes. With Pat Iyer. We have to, must give her a shout out, of course. And the most recent release, Negotiating with a Bully, Take Charge and Turn the Tables on People Trying to Push You Around. And it has a forward by Harvey McKay. Nice. Oh, nice. I love Harvey. So, yes, <laughs> that's, that's, that's special. Um, all you have to do is text over MYB to 64600. Again, text over MYB to 64600. Good luck. Now let's get back to the questions here. You know, your most recent release is Negotiating with a Bully. Mm. Take charge and turn the tables on people trying to push you around. And that brings to mind, I've heard over the years, the importance of grabbing control of the narrative. Meaning, once you let go of that, then the other person has control. Perhaps you can elaborate on that. Well, it depends on what outcome you're actually seeking as to what you should do as far as maintaining control of the narrative or letting it go. Sometimes you can gain more insight by allowing someone to think you've let go of the narrative just to see exactly what they will do with it. Once you have that insight, you can then put that into your repertoire and decide how you're going to deal with that individual. At other times, it may behoove you to maintain control of the narrative, such as you then control the flow of the negotiation. But the thing is, Yashak, you should always be mindful and respectful of other individuals when you're negotiating. Because if by chance you control the narrative so tightly that the other person feels as though he or she was was actually railroaded, mm-hmm. that person may do something 
to get even with you from a negative perspective somewhere down the line. So you don't want to make enemies. And when you're negotiating, you want to make sure the other person feels as though he or she has truly received something of value as a result of the interactions that they actually had with you. You know, Greg, I have, I have so much respect for you because <laughs> you, you, you said it so, so well. Because even though a person, right, you're the master negotiator and, and you're teaching people how to negotiate, you can't be, you know, I'll, I'll say it in the, in, in, the, in the corporate jungle, you know, you can't be an animal. You can't go after the person, say, you know, a, 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 you know a, like a lion and just say, I'm going to win. I'm going to get that deal. I'm going to railroad people. I'm going to bulldoze my way through. There has to be, if there got to be a mensch. Um, yes, of course, you got to be on your game. Mm -hmm. You have to know what you're doing, but you have to be mindful. That's why you, you use that word a lot, and it's true. You got to be mindful. Uh, know the environment, know the circumstances, be prepared. But at the same time, don't just go in and take charge and, and, and demand ownership. You got to work your way through it. And, 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 there's, and there's, there's curves, there's nuances. It's so. Well, you're absolutely right, which reminded me of yet another story. Sure. <laughs> Stories are great. Okay. Many, many, many years Please. ago, I was in corporate America, mm -hmm. and at that time, I was a vice president in charge of a computer consulting operations. Mm -hmm. There was one particular individual in a corporate, uh, with a corporate client that was a corporate client of ours that had just gained power. She gained the power to actually bring consultants into the environment and say who was going to stay, how long they stay, et cetera, et cetera. She called one morning, 7.30 in the morning. Now, I always got into the office early. Mm -hmm. And she said, here's exactly what we need. This is exactly what you'll provide. You have to do it by 8 o'clock. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. why are you giving such stringent guidelines? You know, right. your right, right, predecessor right, right. never did so. Uh, but she was trying to show that she was in control controlling the narrative at that particular point in time. And I said, I don't have the authority to grant the rates that you're actually asking for. Now, that's something that all people should realize in a negotiation. Never let whomever it is that you know that you're negotiating with, that you are the person making the final decision. Period and point blank. You always want to be able to refer to someone else. And I told her in that case, I had to refer to the president. President came in about quarter after eight or so, mm -hmm. and he and I discussed the situation, and he said, well, how do you feel? And I said, mm, I'm not sure. He said, why not? I said, because I don't know if I want to let her right. have this control, right. because remember, you're always negotiating. Right. That what you do today sets a groundwork for tomorrow. She turned around and said, we called her back, I think it was 8.30, somewhere in that time frame. She said, I'm sorry, uh, you had a deadline, the deadline has passed, and that's it. Okay, no problem. Fast forward a year or so. She needed our services. I mean, needed our services mm. to save us. And you know how they say turnaround is fair play? Let's just say fair play was in vogue <laughs> at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is not going to share the details how that ended. <laughs> Uh, this is fun. <laughs> Let me get to my next question, Greg. What, <laughs> what should someone consider when creating a negotiating strategy? Ah, you want to understand the entity or entities with mm -hmm. whom you're negotiating. You want to also understand why they want to negotiate with you. Now, notice I said with you, because there's a different mindset mm -hmm. between with you and against you. So you want to even know more about their mindset. To the degree you can find out more of how they've negotiated in the past. Are they a, a staunch, hard type of negotiator? Are they the type of negotiator that wants to go along to get along? If you gather that information, you'll have more insight about how to negotiate with them. Okay, what are they going to do if they can't? come to a successful outcome with you is something else you need to know. The more variables you can gather about how that person might negotiate and what it is that they might do after the negotiation even, the greater the opportunity you'll have to actually negotiate with them more successfully. And remember, keep their goals in mind too. Look at it from a win-win perspective, not a win-lose. The only way I can win, you, you have to lose. Now, Greg, you talk about the best way to ask a question when negotiating, right? What's an assumptive, what's a, an, an, assumpt, an assumptive question 
And how do you use it in a negotiating? Well, well, Yishak, you're a fantastic negotiator yourself, thank you, right? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so, so what do you think of the something question might be? From you, it's a big compliment. So what do you think of the something question it might be, since you already know the answer? Okay, stop, pause, pause, pause. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you feel during that moment right there? Right. Good point. Yeah. Good point. So, so that's put how, on the spot. Yes, exactly. And that's how you can use assumptive questions. That's one way you can use assumptive mm-hmm. questions. Another way to use assumptive questions is to use them to imply that you may know something already. So right. hypothetical, and I'm right. hypothetically right. speaking right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you and I are negotiating, and let's say we're negotiating for something that's a million dollars, and I say something along the lines of, you're shocked, my goodness, you gave 1.5 million before, right? Now, I'm going to watch your response. I'm going to watch your body language. Right, because normally it would be like, what? Yeah, yeah. So, so you will give away some insight as to whether or not that statement is true. It may or may not be true. Uh, but if you all of a sudden say, okay, yeah, well, I did, but cer- certain, certain circumstances right. have changed this time. Right. Now I have information knowing, well, whoa, wait a minute. He did give away 1.5 but before. So now what I'm going to do is just probe. Well, how are the circumstances different? And here's the point. Anytime you are asking questions and someone else is answering them, you're getting more information than you're giving, which gives you a greater ground from which to negotiate. Greg, I understand there's something called anchoring Uh during a negotiation. What what, what does that mean? Well, two negotiators are negotiating. And let's go back to the same example we just used a moment ago. So Mm -hmm. someone says, uh, well, my best offer is a million dollars. Okay, that person's put an anchor point on the table at that particular time. I can then say, well, a million dollars? And see what the person says, which will give me some insight. Or I can say, huh, my goodness, we are so far apart. I don't even think we should continue this negotiation. Now, I don't know. Well, the people on the radio can't actually see my body language, right. but I'm actually shaking right. my head. You're, no. Right, you're shaking it like yeah. I'm ready to walk away. Right, exactly. So I'm. I'm not only is my are my words um, speaking my mind, but Your my body. Facial expression. There you go. Everything is synchronized. So when you anchor, you can anchor from two different perspectives. You can do so to make sure that you set a point in the other person's mind from which you want to start, or you can use an anchor to dissuade someone from trying to go further. That's great. Folks, he's sharing all the secrets. Although <laughs> both of his books, I mean, all of his books, you just, you know, Greg Williams, G-R-E-G, Greg Williams, um, he wrote a number of books. His two most recent books, Body Language, Secrets to Win More ne- Negotiations and Negotiating with a Bully Can Be Yours. Uh, two lucky listeners are going to win both books. All you have to do is text over MYB to 64600. Text over MYB to 64600. Good luck. And, of course, they're available at Amazon and, of course, at bookstores nationwide. But what is the website where people can find out more about you and your services? Thank you, Yusuf. It's www.themasternegotiator.com. That's T-H-E-M-A-S-T-E-R-N-E. G-O-T-I-A-T-O-R dot com. It's Greg, thank you again for joining me here on Mind Your Business. And thank you for extending oh, the invitation. It's, it's always great when we get together. In the previous segment, you talked about doing your homework before you get to the negotiating table. And of course, in today's day and age, there's, you know, there's so many ways. You can just go to YouTube. Almost anyone that you'll be negotiating with, there probably is a clip on them. Either they spoke publicly or, or they were in the crowd, whatever the case may be. My question to you is, let's say you know, there's some people out there that stay out of the public view. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, it's, it's, you can't really get information on them. So that means you're, you're showing up at the table in a negotiating uh, environment and you don't have a book on the person, what tips and tricks would you recommend in that environment? Well, if the person is not savvy, they will be, no pun intended, an open book. They'll display their body language that will give insights into the mindset that they actually possess. For example, Mm -hmm. if someone is in a laid back uh, position, you can pretty much tell, okay, so at least at this moment, 
this person is feeling non-threatened, the person is at a peaceful state of mind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can walk in and you can greet that person in that particular with that particular demeanor yourself. Then observe how the person changes his or her demeanor, even if they do so throughout the negotiation, going mm-hmm. back and forth to soft to hard, soft to hard, mm-hmm. smiling, frowning, et cetera, et cetera. So you can always pick up cues. And again, you can meet what you're met with, if the person happens to be someone that says, uh, hypothetically, you, you go to shake the person's hand and the person says, I don't have time for this. Mm. Okay, that's a demeanor right there. Right, so right, right away. Mirror Either that attitude or, or, yes. yeah, some, so, or, or being very standoffish. Right, exactly. Mirror the person. Now, here's the point. You should know why you're actually going into that place or whatever environment you're right. going into to negotiate anyway, which means you do have some kind of insight as to why you're there and thus why that other person is there. Greg, we've spoken uh, quite a bit about body language and, and, and picking up on the cues. What tips could you share if someone's negotiating over the phone? Ah, there are times when you can actually listen to the tonality of someone's voice. You can tell when they're in comfort mode and things are flowing nicely. Then all of a sudden, they may actually change the tonality of their voice, or they may become... um, This is great. um, This is radio. um, um, uh, (laughs) Right. So those are the little silent, nonverbal clues that you can pick up on that are verbal. And listen to the word choice that people use from time to time. It's one thing to say, well, I think we can do this deal if X, Y, Z. That's altogether different than we can do this deal if X, Y, Z. So there are small little nuances that you have to be very attentive to in order to understand what the thought process is that's going on in the mind of the other negotiator. Here's one other thing to be very observant of. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dead space. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> people don't like silence <laughs> and a lot of times if you do just that uh, someone will eventually say right, are you still it. there or right, right, like right. you go yeah well you know for some reason I thought that last offer you made just uh, I, th- I thought it was a joke and I didn't know if, if I should be laughing or not oh no I well uh, I didn't mean to offend you <laughs> okay now the person's on the defense and all that you've done is just allow right. dead right. space to, to hang using out. the uh, leveraging silence yes. as part of the yeah I well, love the way you phrase that that's great. <laughs> mm-hmm. my next question is what tips would you share if, if you're negotiating by email? Ah, again, just like you can pick up clues and cues mm-hmm. from a nonverbal perspective when someone speaks, you can do the same thing in writing. Now, we know when someone sends a text message or an email and it's all caps that it's supposed right. to be They're yeah, screaming. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah. Well, let's say the tonality of an email, a letter changes. Dear Greg, I appreciate you taking the time to negotiate with us thus far. Uh, please respond per our last offer. Okay, that's one email that comes out or mm-hmm. one letter that comes mm-hmm. out. And I make a response. The next one that comes out says, Greg, my goodness, I can't believe that you would have made such a counter offer. Uh, there's no way we could address that. You can see the tonality right. change. Yeah. Just yeah, Exactly. So, right, exactly. They're getting tougher. Right. Now, it would then discern you to try, or I should say it would then behoove you to try and discern if what they were trying to do was reposition the negotiation. And to do that, you could go right back to the dear part. Remember, I started off the first one with right. dear Greg. Right. You go right back to, well, well dear Yashak, oh, I, I was not trying to intend right. to intentionally try to offend you. And then see what their response happens to be. So you can play games all day long going back and forth in writing. Here's one other thing to always remember, though. It will be to your advantage to negotiate in the manner that best suits the negotiation. Sometimes you will want time between offers, counter offers, and thus maybe the mail, maybe email would be a better source than over the phone, than face to face. It's all according to what information you're trying to right. gather based on the medium that you should be using. Greg, um, how could people find that? What's your website that people could you know, find out more information because you, you speak around the world. Uh, companies consult with you before they do big deals. What's your website? It's www.themasternegotiator.com. That's T H E M A S. 
T E R N E G O T I A T O R dot com. My guest this evening is none other than Greg Williams, the Master Negotiator. And but that's your that's your website, right, mm-hmm. Greg? The Master Negotiator dot com dot com. Mm-hmm. Um, he's written many books. His two most recent releases, Body Language Secrets to Win More Negotiations, How to Read Any Opponent and Get What You Want, and Negotiating with a Bully, Take Charge and Turn the Tables on People Trying to Push You Around. Uh, Greg is giving away a number of sets, two sets. Thank you, thank you, Greg. And it's um, all you have to do is text over MYB to six four six zero zero MYB to six four six zero zero. Two lucky listeners are going to win that set of autographed copies of his two most recent releases. Thank you, Greg. You're more than welcome. Oh man, you know we still have uh, I have a ton of questions to ask because you know listen negotiating is 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 that art the art of negotiations and the art of negotiating is really that uh, secret that that separates you know the uh, you know the the big boys from the from the ones that are just trying their best mm-hmm. and um, we'll do our best to get in as many questions as we could we're gonna jump right in and and you know I want to go to this question which you've You've touched on from different angles, but when reading body language during a face-to-face negotiation, what body language signals should you observe? Well, here's the standard answer. It depends. For example, if I said something along the lines of, that's my best offer, and I cannot, I cannot, I cannot go any lower or do any better. Now, I would think that that you are being extremely clear. Right. And let's say the other person then looks me in the eye and goes, yeah, how much (laughs) lower can you go? (laughs) Now, the person could be testing me, but that eh, said to me, the person literally went into thought mode to decide what he should do or say at that particular point in time. Let's look, let's look at some other gestures. Mm-hmm. The person may actually lean back. What the person is saying with that gesture at that time is, well, I don't want to be too close to this offer. Let me take a moment to possibly think about what I should respond with. Or let's say the person starts to rub his or her eye. The person could be indicating, I don't even want to see this. Uh, the person starts clearing their throat. Remember, the body wants to stay in a state of comfort. The person is starting to get a little choked up with the clearing of the throat. Uh, the person starts to squirm in his or her seat. Uh, the person's becoming uncomfortable. Now, if I sense any of those gestures and then the person says, well, I'm not sure what to do next, I would then say, what do you think you should do next? Remember what I said earlier, the person asking the questions in a negotiation is the person that's controlling the narrative and flow of the negotiation. And I'll let that person give me his or her perspective of what a successful negotiation outcome might look like. Now, Greg, I hope this is a fair question because you know, everything has to do with the environment. Mm-hmm. But is there a perfect time, a spot, when to make an offer? Well, truth be known, it's when you have the greatest advantage and the other person doesn't. Now, I'm not saying you should take advantage of anyone when you're in such a position, but you've heard or may have heard uh, with car dealers, the end of the month when they want to get their numbers up, et cetera, et cetera, is a time that you should go in and try and bargain to get the best deal that you can possibly get. So it might not behoove you to go in through the beginning of the month, the first of the month or something of that nature. So that's just one example of having a strategy developed that will allow you to get a better source of leverage from which to negotiate. It's such an important point, um, and it really comes back to something you shared at the beginning of the show. Do your homework beforehand. Uh, like by do it. Like for example, for when you negotiate to 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 get a new car, once you know that secret that you know they got to clear out the lot or they have numbers they have to match, but towards the end of the month, you know that your leverage goes up in that last week. Exactly. And therefore. And, and you could even go to their competition to find out what type of offers the competition might be offering on the same model that you want. So you have more leverage. Now, what's the best attitude to display during a negotiation? I mean, this is now, now I'm turning the question around, not how to read the other person, but rather 
What's the best attitude that one should maintain during a negotiate during a, a negotiations? Here's my answer again. It depends. It depends because if you're met with someone that's negotiating from a soft style of negotiation, I'll go along to get along mm-hmm. versus someone that's negotiating from a hard perspective, my way or the highway type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Your demeanor until that person changes should match the demeanor that you're negotiating with of the person that you're negotiating with. So if someone is negotiating from a hard position, you can take a hard stance. Now, some people might go, well, might that not create an impasse in the negotiation to which I would say, what's the alternative? Allow that person to steamroll you. And, And you don't want to come across as being harsh or overbearing with the person that is soft going. You want to match the demeanor to make that person feel comfortable. We're, uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. I still have two more questions, but um, I, you know, the, the many listeners out there, many companies will want to find out more information. Please, what is your website? It's www.themasternegotiator.com. That's T-H-E-M-A-S-T-E-R-N-E-G-O-T-I-A-T-O-R.com. Greg, here's a uh, really a, you know, a fascinating question. You stated that someone negotiating should never have so much emotion invested in the negotiating and in, in, in the particular negotiation. Why? Because they, you know, they may lose their head. They'll lose their composure if they become if they're, if they're, if there's too much it, you know, emotional, uh, you know, impact or however you want to frame it going on at the time. What's your what's your take on that? What's your suggestion? What's your recommendation in order to make sure that someone doesn't get too emotionally wound up entering the negotiation? Well, I can go back to the car situation, too, because yeah. sometimes someone will get so emotionally involved with having that car that they'll end up paying more than they had intended. First of all, leave your emotions home <laughs> when you go right. out to negotiate. And you can do that by setting stop gap measurements, meaning, okay, if you're talking about a million dollar deal and you know that you really can go to, let's say, 1.2 million, set 1 million as a threshold, but at the same time, know that you have that extra fudge factor, but that's it. And uh, no matter what happens, do not exceed that fudge factor. You protect yourself that way because if you get emotionally involved, the next thing you know, you're at 1.6, 1.7, et cetera. (laughs) Greg, my final question. You've been out there. You've been out in the forest for many years. You've kind of seen it all. What what final tip could you share with the listeners of Mind Your Business? By all means, you are always negotiating. (laughs) I should have predicted you were going to say that. (laughs) And and it's so true. So so, so keep that in mind uh, in every activity that you're engaged in throughout every aspect of your life. You're always negotiating with your spells, with your balls, with your subordinate, with whomever. Keep that in mind. You're always negotiating. Folks, now you know why we're in the top 10 in New York AM radio. Every single week we get great guests. And Greg, what an amazing show. Thank you so much for joining me here on Mind Your Business. you shock. It was my pleasure for sure. I love the honor of interviewing C-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.